there. So they decided not to. So I asked him. I said, so you think there were spirits in there? And he goes, I guess. Yeah. And I said, now, if uh, science created humans and everything in the universe, who created the spirits? Because, you know, those spirits used to be in, in, in a body. And they're, when they died, they didn't know how to pass over or they couldn't pass over or whatever. And there's spirits here. We now know that demons, the demons, are actually the unembodied spirit of the Nephilim, just so you'll know. It's not our brothers and our family or friends or people we know or evil people that died and that can't, and their spirit remained. No, when you die, your spirit goes. It goes wherever it's going to go. Anyways, um, so I told him, I said, you know, it, something had to have created that body for that spirit to embody, you know, to be in. And as, and I said, you know, you can, in this video I was saying, you can take a Rolex watch, a nice, expensive, double digit cost, you know, like what, like $50,000 or something for a really good Rolex? Throw it up in the air, or take it apart, throw it up in the air, and expect it to land perfectly in, in together in your hand. Because that's how they explain the Big Bang Theory. Basically, the the everything exploded in the sky, and then it came together to form the earth, us, all the plants, trees, bees, hippopotamuses, giraffes, cats, dogs, tigers, lions, all from an explosion. Right? And I said, and I was saying in this video, I said, you, you cannot tell me that that is all from just an explosion. Our bodies are too perfectly made. And if you ever look at what's on the inside of the human body, you will see how every part has its own job, but, to, but uniformly, they all work together. And just as I was listening to that part in my video, it dawned on me. We are the body of Christ. Oh, I lost two viewers, bummer. We are the body of Christ. And every one of us has a job. But uniformly, we make up the body. Jesus is the head, we're the body. And so, when lukewarm Christians or when uh, people that claim to be Christians are attacking each other and backbiting, because they're, they're unsure of what's going on. Now, the reason why they're unsure of what's going on in the world right now is because, sadly, their church is not teaching them about the end times and the signs that are just obviously going on right now. The prophecy is being fulfilled as we speak in the Bible, right? To the point that Jesus could come any time. Now, and if they're not be pro being properly taught, then they can't be performing their job in the body like they should. So that body is not uniform. You know, it's not working together uniformly. And, you know, if you don't bear good fruit, you will be cut off. Because we were grafted in. Those that are not Jewish, that is, are, were grafted in on the vine. And if he will cut off the natural vine, what makes you think he won't cut off the, the grafted in vine? You know, if a tree doesn't produce good fruit, he will put an axe to the, to the base of it and take it down, right? So, we, we need to stop backbiting. We need to stop judging each other. We need to quit accusing each other. The worst, lie and betray one another. Make things up, you know? You can write a sentence in text. And depending on that person's mood, they're either going to read it as you're, you're joking around, you know, or you're, you're being nice, or that you're straight on attacking. You know, it's just all how in your mind you perceive that. Now, if you've already biased to believe that someone is just a terrible person because that's what you've been told, then no matter what she says, even if she says God is good, they're going to read it wrong, you know. And we, as the body of Christ, should not be doing that. You know, unbelievers are watching the Christians fighting each other. And they're going, and you want me to be, to believe how loving your God is, and y'all are attacking each other and hating each other? I've saw, I've, I've saw, I've done saw. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have seen many pastors on YouTube, different pastors, that are talking about that, you know, that, that we shouldn't be attacking one another. With the time being so short, now is the time that we need to be 
lifting one another up and by doing so edifies the church there are a lot of people out there scared and unsure they don't know what's going on because they're not familiar with the bible they're losing hope suicide rates almost doubled hello i just got a i am uh, because people are losing hope and right now the harvest is plenty but the workers are few i'm sorry i keep getting things popping up that's very distracting i think i'm gonna stick to youtube videos thank you frank god bless you brother uh, and time is short time is so very short so very short in jerusalem they already have the first red heifer that they haven't had for two thousand years they now have a red heifer that's spotless and, and you know that's that's perfect for their sacrifice so that they can do a, a sacrifice to get to burn it to get the ashes so that the, when the third temple's built <laughs> when the third temple is built they will mix it with those ashes and so that way the high priest that they've already picked for this new temple can sanctify himself and wash himself with this water mixed with the the sacrifice ashes and so that way he'll be able to enter the temple to do further or you know more sacrifices i mean everything is coming together to a head i mean just all at once amen brother amen yeah and and sadly frank not enough people are saying these things you know, enough people are preaching this behind the pulpit, and there's going to be a lot of people that are still being their little lukewarm selves that just go to church on Sunday because they have done their deed for the week, and then the rest of the week they live in the world, and then when Jesus comes for his church, which could be any time, there are no prophecies need to be fulfilled for the rapture, or harpazo, uh, and there's going to be several folks left behind, and they're not going to understand why, and those pastors that were not preparing the sheep, that was not taking care of Jesus' flock, the, the great shepherd's flock, they're going to have to answer to that. And so I pray harder for the, the pastor sometimes. You too, brother. Have a blessed day or night, wherever you are. Uh, I pray more for the pastors because they're going to have to answer to God for these things. But the main thing about this video was talking about, you know, that how important it is that that we as a church body pull it together and quit hating each other and quit having unforgiveness and quit backbiting and quit lying on people and quit gossiping. You know, that we should be working together uniformly because with everything going on in the world and with a lot of people losing hope, they are ready to hear the gospel. They need something to give them hope, to know that no matter how bad it looks on the outside, even unto the point of death of this vessel that they that they will know that they will be in the presence of god as paul said to be absent in the body means to be in the presence of god and you know so it's a win-win situation granted if you have family and children and grandchildren that that may kind of make you not want to be absent but the way this world is going i hope the rapture soon i really do because it's only going to get worse, folks. It's only going to get worse. This is nothing compared to what's coming. And it's just right around the corner. There are top priests in Israel that have already said that they have been having meetings with what they call the Messiah. But is actually the Antichrist. Because we know who the Messiah is. So church family, we need to get it together. And we need to quit having unforgiveness. Because if you can't forgive others, God cannot forgive you. And what would happen if you were in that state of mind when Jesus comes for his church? I wouldn't want to be it, that's for sure. But anyways, that, that made me think of that when I saw that video. And I'm going to post that video. It's from five years ago. It's when I was first working at Dell. And every morning I would I would get on there just for a few minutes and tell everyone to have a blessed day. And to remember, if you see someone, smile. You know, because you never know. That person may be going home to, to commit suicide. And by having a total stranger smile at them like they're the most beautiful, most wonderful person on the planet. That may be all they needed to know that at least one person thinks they're great. You know, I know that when someone smiles at me, it just lights me up inside. You know, it just makes me so happy. Even if I was having a crappy day that day, that crappiness just ended. And I'm going to have a good day the rest of the day. So remember that. Smile. Man, we don't have enough love in this world. We need to start smiling at folks. And a lot of times I get people snarl back at me and that's okay. 
you know that's okay because even though their body reaction their reaction was that way their mind caught it and their heart caught it and they may think about it later you know but anyways i'm rambling now i love you and jesus loves you and and like i always say yes he is the king of kings amen brother amen <laughs> i've got frank frank over here uh i love this guy he's over here cheering me on see that's what we should be doing when someone's trying to reach others for Jesus, that's what we should be doing. We should be rooting for one another. Amen. Okay, so that's that. I'm way longer than I intended to be, especially live on Facebook. I'm surprised it let me finish my video. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And remember, there's never a pit. Now, I got this from Joyce Meyer. I don't follow her because she's a prosperity preacher, but I do like this saying. There's never a pit too deep that Jesus can't pull you out. Amen. Have a blessed day. Bye, guys.